There is a fear of what people are calling a technical recession becoming a real recession. Recession. A recession. A recession. 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 The word recession is on everyone's lips right now. Global financial markets have been in a free fall as central banks hike interest rates in an attempt to curb record high inflation. Credit markets are drying up by the minute, which makes it harder to access capital. And Michael Burry, the man who predicted the 2008 financial crisis, thinks more pain is ahead. Tech companies are issuing layoffs and Sequoia has urged its founders to immediately cut spending to focus on cash flow. But one VC firm refuses to back down, undeterred by all warning signs. And Dreesen Horowitz has backed some of the most prominent names in tech, and now they're doubling down with a fresh four $4.5 billion crypto fund, the largest Web3 focused fund ever raised. A16Z knows a secret about product and financial cycles that most people don't, calling the next few years a golden period for crypto. What's behind A16Z's conviction? Why are they going all in on crypto when the rest of the market is bunkering down? And what exactly are they planning to do with their freshly minted war chest? In this channel, we break down incredible business stories using knowledge from the fields of finance, economics, computer science, and psychology. Why? Because real knowledge is derived from studying core concepts and fundamentals, not by staring at fugazi price charts. As a former investment banker and startup founder, I've learned that the best way to understand new trends and technology is to use a research-driven and multidisciplinary approach. If that sounds like your vibe, hit subscribe. As always, nothing on here is financial advice. Don't make financial decisions based on what I say. I got a freaking C in discrete math. It's summer 1993 in Silicon Valley. 22-year-old Mark Andreessen has just graduated from the University of Illinois with a newly minted computer science degree. Born in Cedar Falls, Iowa, with a population of 40,000, Mark has spent most of his life in the rural Midwest, but he's finally ready to venture off to the big leagues. Mark is about to embark on a journey that technology enthusiasts can only dream of. He has arrived in Silicon Valley with one goal, to help create one of mankind's greatest inventions, the internet. Mark Andreessen wasn't your typical kid growing up. He spent his childhood years reading about computers and taught himself programming by devouring library books. He built his first computer program in sixth grade and was known to publicly challenge his teachers. In college, Mark and programmer Eric Bina developed Mosaic, one of the world's first web browsers, while Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web, and others had already developed successful browsers, Mosaic was the first web browser to automatically display pictures along with text. This enabled a more magazine-like browsing experience. With over 2 million copies downloaded in its first year, Mosaic was instrumental in popularizing the World Wide Web in the mid-1990s from a domain of nerds to a global cultural phenomenon. What do President Clinton, conservative radio personality Rush Limbaugh, and rock star Billy Idol have in common? They've all got electronic mail addresses on computer systems linked to the Internet, a global hookup that permits computers to exchange information. In 1981, only 213 computers were hooked to the Internet. As the new year begins, an estimated 2.5 million computers will be on the network, serving as many as 20 million people. Mark Andreessen's web browser was so successful that Robert Metcalf, the co-inventor of Ethernet and the brains behind Metcalf's law, said that Mosaic helped people realize that the Internet is actually better than sex. Having arrived in Silicon Valley with this wildly satisfying innovation, Mark Andreessen launched Netscape Communications with Jim Clark at the age of 23. Together, they went on to compete with Microsoft's Internet Explorer in the so-called first browser war, sparking the internet boom in the mid-1990s. Microsoft is the release of a much improved 2.0 version of its Internet Explorer. But Internet Explorer has a long way to go to catch up with Netscape. Three out of four people on the web still use Netscape Navigator. Now this competition has gotten personal. Co-founder of Microsoft, Bill Gates, Gates versus co-founder of Netscape, Mark Andreessen. But Bill Gates' Microsoft proved to be a tough opponent. Unlike Netscape Navigator, Internet Explorer was available to all Windows users for free, which gave it a massive unfair advantage and accelerated its adoption. Netscape went from owning 90% of the browser market share in the mid-1990s to less than 1% in the early 2000s. Oof. But by then, Mark Andreessen had already broken into the public eye. He was featured on the cover of Time magazine following Netscape's smashing IPO in 1995 and eventually sold the company to AOL for $10 billion. Netscape took Silicon Valley and Wall Street by storm. Other than the Navigator browser, Netscape's engineers also created JavaScript, the world's most popular programming language, SSL encryption, and HTTP cookies, which allows websites to remember your browsing history, an essential part of the internet browsing experience today, but also a potential 
personal privacy concern and a real pain in the ass to consent to every single time you visit a website. Following AOL's acquisition, Andreessen went on to found his second company, Opsware, with his future VC partner Ben Horowitz, Tim House and Insig Re. Originally named LoudCloud, the company provided computing, hosting and software services to consumer-facing Fortune 500 companies such as Ford, Gannett and Nike. Opsware was one of the first companies to offer SaaS and cloud hosting as a business model and was eventually acquired by tech giant HP for $1.6 billion in 2007. Flush with cash from his back-to-back -back exits, Mark began actively investing in early-stage tech companies and sharing his vast domain expertise. Between 2006 and 2009, Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz co-invested in 45 startups and became known as Super Angels. Realizing their edge in picking excellent startups and generating superior returns for investors, the two VCs raised a $300 million fund and launched Andreessen Horowitz in 2009. Since then, A16Z has become one of the world's most elite VC firms, attracting both talented founders and investors, including Chris Dixon, the brains behind A16Z's crypto initiatives. Mark Andreessen and Chris Dixon have both been involved in tech for decades and never before have they compared a new innovation to the early days of the internet, until now. Yeah, so look, yeah, so th this is the only, the only time I've ever said this is like the internet is, is this. Like, I've, I've never, if you go back through all my historical statements, like what one could imagine that with my experience I could have said this like 48 times. Mark Andreessen believes crypto will be as impactful as the internet itself, but what makes him so sure? To a man who not only witnessed the early days of Web 1, but actually played a key role in building it and invested in some of the most successful Web 2 companies, Web 3 seems like a no-brainer. Web 1, the first era of the internet, spanned from 1990 to 2005. It revolved around open protocols that were decentralized and community governed. Information would flow from servers to clients and if you built something on the web, no one could take it away from you or force you to change it. A common thing to do was to take any information from the real world, such as a magazine or newspaper, and publish it online in digital form. However, there was one big problem. Online payments were illegal, which meant you couldn't use the web to buy or sell anything. Why was it illegal? Well, internet infrastructure in the early 1990s was funded by the US government as part of a research project at the National Science Foundation. And the government didn't like the idea of taxpayer money going towards commercial use, banning all forms of transactions. This non-commercial ethos of the early internet made any real innovation difficult. There was zero trust between parties and economic incentives were non-existent. As a result, advertisement became the dominant revenue model for anyone trying to make money online, something Mark refers to as the original sin of the internet. Mark and his colleagues would regularly try to convince Congress that the internet could one day be used to buy things like kitchen appliances and shampoo, but they would get laughed out of the room. Similar to crypto today, the early internet faced a lot of regulatory headwinds. The first era of the internet, Web1, democratized information. Anyone could read information online through websites such as Wikipedia. The second era of the internet, Web2, spanned from 2005 to 2020 and democratized publishing. Anyone could post content online and interact with others. Platforms such as Facebook, YouTube and Twitter came to life driven by ads as their primary business model. We're now in the early innings of the third area of the internet, Web3, which makes it possible to own things online. A16Z describes Web3 as a combination of the decentralized community governed ethos of Web1 with the advanced modern functionality of Web2. Andreessen Horowitz believes Web3 will unlock a new wave of creativity and entrepreneurship. My favorite mental model for the three eras of the web is links, likes, and tokens. So why is now the best time to raise a fund and double down on crypto? Mark Andreessen is one of the few people in the world who has actively been involved in all three internet waves. He understands that every new computing era has a golden period where amazing things are built. And we're entering that golden period for crypto as we speak. Chris Dixon succinctly summarized this notion in the following chart. Product and financial cycles evolve independently. While financial cycles are unpredictable and can fluctuate wildly, product cycles are a lot more predictable. Every iconic product has gone through an incubation phase and a growth phase. For example, there have been solid attempts at creating smartphones during the incubation phase in the 1990s, but it wasn't until the creation of the iPhone in 2007 that truly led to explosive smartphone growth. The growth phase kicks in once the right mix of technology, talent, and community knowledge comes together. We're just entering that phase for crypto right now. The best companies are built during bear markets. Snapchat, Instagram, Venmo, Uber, and Airbnb were all created between 2008 and 2011, shortly after the great financial crisis. When credit markets are tight, the only way to attract talent and capital is by executing a long-term vision and actually building amazing products. 
Out of its $4.5 billion fund, A16Z is dedicating $3 billion to later stage venture investments and $1.5 billion to seed investments, bringing its total crypto digital asset focused efforts to $7.6 billion. A16Z plans to deploy its capital in amazing people and big ideas over a 10 year horizon. They're also contributing to the crypto community by launching a new research team where all information will be open sourced. They've hired a team focused on policy and regulation and recently launched a Web3 focused podcast and newsletter, all in an effort to further the cause and use case of Web3. While it may seem crazy that A16Z is raising its largest fund ever in the midst of economic turmoil, their thesis certainly holds merit. Chris Dixon believes the global economy is going to run on the blockchain in the future, and the best time to double down on your biggest conviction bets is of course when valuations are down. This aligns with Warren Buffett's investment philosophy to be greedy when others are fearful, and fearful when others are greedy. Buffett is the greatest investor of all time, but in contrast to Mark Andreessen and Chris Dixon, Warren absolutely hates crypto. Watch this video next to find out why. Thanks a lot.